Thanks for listening to English Go podcast. To listen without advertisements or to read episode transcripts, visit englishgo.co.uk for more information. Everyone knows therapy is great for solving problems, but getting therapy has its own problems too, like finding the right therapist, fitting into their schedule, and of course, the cost. Well, BetterHelp can solve those problems. It's totally online and built around your schedule. It's surprisingly affordable too. Connect with a credentialed therapist by phone, video, or online chat, all from the comfort of your home. Visit BetterHelp.com to learn more and save 10% on your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P. There's never been a faster or easier way to start your weight loss journey than with Plush Care. Plush Care accepts most insurance plans and gives you online access to board-certified physicians who can prescribe FDA-approved weight loss medications like Wigovi and ZepBound for those who qualify. Take charge of your health and speak with a board-certified physician about a weight loss plan that's right for you. Get started today at plushcare.com slash weight loss. That's plushcare.com slash weight loss. plushcare.com slash weight loss. One size fits all seemed like a good idea for clothes. Nice dress. Uh, it's, a, it's a t-shirt. Until you tried it on. Same goes for your health care. That's why United Healthcare offers a variety of flexible, budget-friendly coverage for medical, vision, dental, and more. So whether you're between jobs, coming off a parent's plan, or even missed open enrollment, you can find the plan that fits you best. Find out more about United Healthcare coverage at uh1.com. That's uh1.com. As I was talking about planting things and growing things um, last episode, it made me remember a time when my parents used to keep chickens. Now, we didn't live on a farm or anything like that. Um, we just had a normal house and uh, in a normal area, and it had a back garden that was big enough um, for keeping chickens in. And normally, I mean, I, I really don't know what happens with very modern houses, but like lots of English houses are quite old um, because they're made of brick and the brick houses last a very long time. So it's not unusual to find a house that's over 100 years old, maybe over 200 years old um, or 300. I mean, there's a pub um, by my parents' house, which is hundreds of years old. I think it dates back to like the 1400s or something, or, or is it 1100s? So yeah, it's um, that's old. <laughs> but anyway, uh, brick buildings can last a long time. And I think my parents' house is probably around 70 or 60 years old now. And um, when you buy a house, it can come with permissions for things that you can do with the land that the house is upon, that, you know, the house is built upon. Um, so sometimes you can have permission to keep livestock. Livestock means live animals on there. And there's limits, you know, you can't put a giraffe in, in your back garden. I don't think a giraffe is livestock because livestock is generally like a, an animal that you would eat. Um, so we could probably keep pigs and we could keep chickens, obviously. Um, mm, I don't know what else. Um, I don't know if we could keep like, um, I don't think we could keep a cow. I mean, the, my, uh, <laughs> my parents' back garden wasn't that big. You could You could fit a cow in there, but I just think it would be a bit cruel. <laughs> but, um, Oh, rabbits as well, yeah. Uh, but but um, anyway, a, a long time ago, it was a lot more common for people to keep livestock. Um, and particularly like after the war, um, when there was not too much food around and people would keep their own livestock. So they might keep rabbits and uh, chickens and pigs and they would kill them and they would eat them. Um, so that is why... Uh, my parents' house, um, you have that permission to, um, you know, to keep livestock. Uh, so we ended up with some chickens and only a couple of them. And, well, I say chickens, they were hens. They were female chickens. And every morning we'd go outside and collect the eggs. So they had this special, like, house <laughs> that they lived in and um, a, I believe it's called a coop like a chicken coop. So it's like um, a, like a cage, but a, a big cage uh, that they could live in. And uh, we'd let them out into the garden every day. And it was 
really nice. I enjoyed uh, seeing the chickens, and we enjoyed keeping the chickens, and we enjoyed eating the eggs, <laughs> of course. It was nice having uh, fresh eggs um, every morning. And we we had, I can't remember how many eggs uh, we used to get from these two hens, um, but we had a lot of eggs. I just remember there were always eggs <laughs> in my house at that at that time. And these ch- these chickens were nice. They were sort of like part livestock. We, we weren't going to eat them. We didn't we didn't want to eat them at all. Um, and I, they might have been too old. You can only eat chickens when they they're young, apparently. Um, anyway, they were sort of like half like a an animal that was useful. You know, it was giving us free eggs and half like a pet as well. So we gave them both names, and I can't remember the names of both. I remember one was called Ginger, because um, she had, like, gingery coloured feathers, like red feathers. And the other one's name, I'm afraid I can't remember. But they were they were interesting animals to keep. Like, sometimes I remember sitting in my parents' back garden, and then one of them would just come running up to you. And it was just interested, and just wanted to... I don't know if it wanted to say hi, but, you know, it just wanted to see you. Um, so, yeah, they were, they were quite nice. And they were fun to keep around. But I think if you do keep chickens, you need a really big garden, like even bigger than my parents' garden, because those chickens, wow, they they destroyed uh, my parents' garden. So my parents' garden was quite well looked after. Um, you know, all the, all the grass was nice and... Um, uh, flowers planted in it and it was quite nicely arranged um until the chickens came and they i think they ate all of the flowers or picked at all the flowers and destroyed them and then the grass um they were constantly like like scraping the the grass with their feet um so what, that's how they that's how they try and eat food so like they try and dig the grass a bit and then look for any insects or worms that are like moving and then they eat them you know peck them and eat them um so i didn't know how long it took but um very quickly the the whole garden sort of turned into like a big muddy brown thing and it wasn't very nice to look at um i i guess we could have just keep kept the chickens in the coop uh, in this sort of like caged area and not let them into the garden but I don't know. It would have just seemed a bit cruel. It was nice to give them some space to, like, some you know, more space to roam, roam about freely. Um, so we just had to let the garden become, <laughs> you know, just d- destroyed. Anyway, I, I can't remember how long uh, we kept them for, like how many years. But we did have to say goodbye to them in the end. And I think, I think the reason was um, we didn't know when we bought them we didn't know that chickens only uh, hens only produce eggs for like a short part of their lives i think and i think they live for around 20 years and we thought hmm um what happens when the chickens when the the hens stop producing eggs you know we we just they'd just be pets then of course um which is okay and we we enjoyed keeping them as pets but um i think we wanted the garden back, really. <laughs> um, and my mother knew someone who knew that we had chickens and wanted chickens because they had a really large amount of land and they wanted all kinds of animals just wandering freely around there. Maybe it was their... I don't know if it was their back garden. It might have been. Um, and we said, like, you know, our, our chickens are getting a bit old now. We, we don't know how long they're going to be, keep laying eggs for. And they were they were just okay with that you know that's fine just want you know some chickens wandering around um so yeah that's where they went to live in the end they found a better place with more space and uh hopefully well they should still be alive now uh yeah so hopefully they are still alive and uh enjoying wandering around um someone else's back garden but i think lots of people who do do keep back uh, do keep eggs do keep chickens and um keep them for eggs you know you don't you want, want the eggs from the chickens when the chickens get a bit old they'll kill them and we couldn't do that that's just um i don't know just uh, i don't know i just can't imagine doing it to be honest i mean can you imagine like oh thank you we, we've we've had eggs from you every morning uh, for the past so many years but now you can't give us eggs we're going to reward you by killing you 
And that's a, a really horrible thing to do, but I suppose that is the reality of it. I think that's probably what happens on farms. I mean, you've got chicken farms with hundreds and hundreds of chickens. So what happens when they stop laying eggs? It's rather sad, really. But um, anyway, yeah, our, our chickens should be uh, still alive, hopefully, um, wandering around somewhere freely. I was thinking, um, if ever I happen to be living somewhere that just has a lot of land attached to it, um, I probably won't be, but um, if I do find myself in that situation, maybe I will get some chickens. I mean, an- another another animal that I miss having, um, that my parents used to have, this is before the chickens, rabbits. We didn't eat those. Um, it, I, I think like my, my grandfather uh, used to keep rabbits and they were for eating, um, but that was a long time ago. Um, but anyway, we just kept rabbits because they were cute pets. And they used to live in the garden in a, in a rabbit hutch, which is like a special house for for a rabbit. And they actually, they started off living in, in the rabbit hutch. And we'd let them out in the mornings and they'd have fun, you know, playing in the garden. Or Well, I don't suppose they were playing. Well, sometimes they were playing, actually. Rabbits do play. Um, but, you know, like they were just living in the garden and eating all the grass they would keep the amazing thing is when we had rabbits we never had to use a lawnmower we didn't have to cut the grass ever the rabbits would keep the grass at the correct length it was great (laughs) it was great if you don't like mowing the lawn if you don't like cutting the grass anyway like i said we used to get them out in the morning and then when the evening come we'd catch them and we'd put them back in the rabbit hutch um but you know, sometimes it would be difficult to catch them, and sometimes and rabbits are very quick. Or sometimes we'd sort of forget, and it would get dark, and then we couldn't even see them. So a lot of the time, the rabbits would end up just staying outdoors in the, in the garden. And in the end, we just sort of gave up trying to catch them, and we just let them live outdoors. And they seemed to like that. And um, I, I remember one one or two of them; they were burrowing, uh, which means digging a hole. Uh, under the ground and so I guess they made a home to live and it was I tell you what it was really nice coming down in the morning you know like early in the morning 6 a.m 7 a.m or whatever um putting the kettle on to make a cup of tea looking out of the window and you just see rabbits (laughs) in in your garden uh just munching away at the grass eating all the grass so I do miss um I do I do miss having the rabbits around and uh, we also had guinea pigs at some point Trying to think, did we have anything else? It was there's fish in uh, my parents' back garden, um, but I think that's it: chickens, rabbits, guinea pigs, fish. I don't think I'm forgetting anything. I could be. Well, dogs, of course, and cats. Yeah, um, I'm just trying to think: did we have anything a bit more unusual? Uh, probably not. I think that's it. Anyway, that is it for today's episode. If you did enjoy the episode, please uh, consider joining the English Go community at englishgo.co.uk forward slash link forward slash community. Until next time, bye-bye. Hey, it's Ryan Reynolds, and I'm here with Keith, co-star of my upcoming film, If, only in theaters May 17th. Do you want to tell people the big news... All right, I'll do it. Sign up now and you'll get unlimited for $15 a month in six months of Paramount Plus Essential Plan on us. Mintmobile.com slash switch. Upfront payment of $45 equivalent to $15 per month. Unlimited over 40 gigabytes per month. Face lower speeds. Videos at 480p. Active Mint customers by 531.24 get six months of Paramount Plus Essential Plan. Auto renews after six months. Offer ends May 31st, 2024. Separate Paramount Plus registration required. Terms and conditions apply if rated PG. Here's a cool fact. A crocodile can't stick out its tongue. Another cool fact you can get short-term health insurance for a month or just under a year in some states. United Healthcare short-term insurance plans are designed for people who are between jobs, coming off their parents' plan, or turning a side hustle into a full-time gig. Underwritten by Golden Rule Insurance Company, they offer flexible, budget-friendly coverage with access to a nationwide network of doctors and hospitals. Get more cool facts about United Healthcare short-term plans at uh1.com. Even when we're on a budget, we still deserve nice things. Quince is a place to scoop up stunning high-end goods for 50 to 80% less than similar brands. They have buttery soft cashmere sweater starting at $50, luxurious Italian leather bags, and so much more. Plus, Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing. Get the high-end goods you'll love without the high price tag with Quince. 
Go to quince.com slash style for free shipping and 365 day returns. Need new glasses or want a fresh new style? Warby Parker has you covered. Glasses start at just 95 bucks, including anti-reflective, scratch-resistant prescription lenses that block 100% of UV rays. Every frame's designed in-house, with a huge selection of styles for every face shape. And with Warby Parker's free home try-on program, you can order five pairs to try at home for free. Shipping is free both ways, too. Go to warbyparker.com slash covered to try five pairs of frames at home for free. Warbyparker.com slash covered. Imagine the softest sheets you've ever felt. Now imagine them getting even softer over time. That's what you'll feel with Bowl and Branch's organic cotton sheets. In a recent customer survey, 96% replied that Bowl and Branch sheets get softer with every wash. Start getting your best night's sleep in these sheets that get softer and softer for years to come. Try their sheets with a 30-night guarantee. Plus, get 15% off your first order at bowlandbranch.com. Code BUTTERY. Exclusions apply. See site for details. Thanks for listening until the very end of the show. If you've enjoyed this episode, please give my podcast a rating, or if you have the time, write a review. It's a really nice way of letting me know you enjoy these episodes and encourages me to make more of them for you. Thanks very much and have a lovely day.